It's Create Day, my friends. I've got some not-so-spooky owl DIYs, and I'll be giving a fresh new look to an old, outdated cornucopia. So let's get started. I picked this little ceramic owl up at the thrift store, and so I'm going to get him all cleaned up and give him a coat of the Rust-Oleum in heirloom white. This is just to get a good base on here, for my other paint to stick to. This is a wood round that I believe I got from Michaels. I want this to be the base for this project, so I'm going to use Dixie Bell's Mud Puddle to give this a good base coat. And I do paint the entire thing front, sides, and back. I'm using the color Java in my home decor chalk paint to start painting my little owl. I end up doing a couple of coats of this. It looks really sparse at first, but once you get that first coat on, the rest goes on um, really easily and you can get total coverage. Now I'm trying to make a platform to put my owl on and I have these egg-shaped wood pieces from Dollar Tree. So I'm going to make more of an oval by lining up the bottom on top of the other one, the opposite ends, so that you can line those sides up and that way you can tell, um, God, this is hard to explain. I can then draw a line where that other end is, see, you'll see here. So I'm going to, the narrow end, I'm drawing the line of the fatter end. So then I can cut that out and it will be more of an oval shape. And this wood on these little ornament pieces is, you know, pretty thin. So I was able to just use my scissors, cut that out on that line. And then I just took some sandpaper to smooth it down. And I finally got one of those little desktop vacuums because this kind of stuff sticks to the silicone mat and that thing is so helpful. I will leave a link in the description box if, um, if you're interested in that particular one. So now I'm using that Java chalk paint to coat the entire surface of my um, newly cut out shape. Then I'm using that same Java chalk paint to go around the edge of the wood round and I'm also going to um, kind of dry brush it across the center. Most of this will be covered so you probably won't even see it but I did want it to look a little distressed in case it did peek through and it ends up not showing at all so I didn't have to do that. So now with Dixie Belle and the color putty I'm going to start the dry brushing process on my owl. I'm going to be using several different colors and doing lots of layers. So all I do is get a little paint on the brush and wipe a lot of it off on a paper towel and then come in and lightly start going over all those little raised areas. I want to make sure I get the tips of the ears and every little detail um, to highlight it with this uh, paintbrush or dry brush technique. The next color I'm using is called French Linen. This is still a chalk paint and I'm going to repeat that process. This is a lighter color and now I'm going to focus on like getting around those eyes and again the like tips of the ears and all over all over the entire owl. Um, not entirely covering up what I just put on there. I'm just adding to it. And that's when you do all these different colors and different layers. Eventually everything still comes through and just it gives some real good visual interest to the project.
The next color is called Honeycomb, and this is an acrylic paint, but that doesn't matter. You can use either acrylic or chalk. Um, and this is kind of a goldish color. I wanted to get some of this in there. I'm, I'm not using a lot of it, but I felt like, you know, owl feathers, somewhere if you were to really examine, there's going to be some type of goldish or yellowish color in there somewhere. So I wanted to add this in with all the other more neutral colors that I'm doing. And this is the color I also wanted to use for his eyes because it's not a like super bright yellow or gold. It's it's It seemed like just a really nice shade for this. And I'm using a small artist brush to go in. I, initially, I tried to go around and, and not get it over the center where the pupil will be, but it just was too difficult. So I just paint the whole inside of that eye. And I will go back and do the pupil later. So now we're back to dry brushing, and I'm using Dixie Belle's Mud Puddle. You can check out the description box to find a list of the products I used with the available links to them. After I finished the Mud Puddle color, I did go ahead and go back over with some of the lighter colors. I just kept adding until I got the look that I wanted. So now I'm going to finish up those eyes. I am using a color called Castle. This is a home decor um, chalk paint. I'm going to fill in that entire section with this nice light gray color. And then I will do the pupil. I just use black chalk paint to paint that on in the center of the eyeball. And then I want to do the Minwax Polycrylic over the eye, just that center portion to give it just a little tiny bit of shine. This is a matte sealer, but it does dry with just a little bit of a sheen, which is perfect for this. It's time to start assembling our little perch for this guy. So I have a piece of um, birch wood that I cut. It's I got these from Bed Bath & Beyond on clearance uh, quite a while ago. And this was the perfect little project for that. So I just cut it to the desired length that I wanted and I'm just going to measure, do the accurate measurement of using my fingers to make sure it's centered. And then I will apply that little wood plank that I cut out in the oval shape on top of that. So I let this sit up for a little bit for the glue to set and then I go ahead and use my brad nailer to secure them. I do, um, I think I do a couple on the top and the bottom. And now to apply our owl to the top of that, I'm using E6000 around that bottom section. Unfortunately, it had that hole because it's a piggy bank, but this ended up working out just fine. I am going to apply about three different types of mosses around this little base. So just with my hot glue gun, I'm adding Spanish moss first, and then I will add in some of the darker moss and some of that lighter, more golden colored moss. Once I have all that on there and I'm happy with how it looks, I can go ahead and take my scissors and just trim off all the pieces that are hanging off too long or that are too scraggly just to clean it up a little. I'm going to be applying uh, the mosses to the base as well, and I added in a fourth moss for this one. It's that really spongy 
kind of light green moss. I just thought that would be a nice addition to have the base look just a little bit different than the top. I didn't like the underside of that little top platform piece to be just the brown painted piece of wood. So I took some of that darker green moss and added that around that bottom edge. I have these little wooden mushrooms that I picked up at the Dollar Tree and thought they would be cute on the base. So I'm going to give them all a coat of my antiquing wax. When that was dry, I kind of buffed them all off with a soft cloth. And now I'm going in with French linen, just dry brushing that over the uh, tops of the mushrooms, kind of along that bottom edge of the top and then a little bit down the stem. And now I'm just going to apply those with some hot glue. I wanted to put a witch hat on this little guy, so I took this pick that I got from the Dollar Tree and tore off those little pipe cleaners they had around it. And I thought instead of doing traditional black, I would use this cheesecloth to make a more natural looking hat because this little guy looks very just natural. He doesn't look Halloween-y at all. And I'm going to speed through this because I ended up not using it. I did not like how it turned out. But here was my idea. I just wanted to show you what I thought would work so that you could, you know, just put that in your toolbox and know that this is how something like this would turn out. So I wrapped that cheesecloth around the brim of the hat using Fabri-Tac glue. And then I took some strips that they're about one inch strips that I started to just wrap around the top of that hat. And then after I got all that on there, I went ahead and trimmed up the edges and um, around the brim and just kind of frayed it a little bit. And then I added Mod Podge to kind of seal this all together. But it was just so, it was kind of bulky and uh, it just didn't look right. But I thought once I distressed it with this Distress Oxide ink spray that I would like it better. And I kind of did, but not totally. So then I added this black ribbon just around the base there. Uh, so I trimmed off the stick and stuck it in through that little slot. And I would have had to glue it down for it to fit right, but I didn't like it enough to do that. So I am leaving him as is for now until I can come up with a better witch hat that looks right. My next project is this old outdated cornucopia that I've had for a very long time. I'm going to start by removing all of the gourds and pumpkins and leaves, berries, everything that's on there. We're going to strip this down to the bare bones. I'll scrape off as much of that moss as I can and I'm going to save the pumpkins and give them a fresh paint job. I'm using Rust-Oleum's Heirloom White to paint both the cornucopia and all of the pumpkins. If you don't have a little turntable Lazy Susan type thing like this that I have, 
it's a game changer for pro projects like this. Um, if I can find it um, on Amazon, I'll leave the link below. Once those were all good and dry, I grab my Dixie Belle chalk paint in buttercream and I'm going to give a good base coat on all of these with this color. When that paint was dry, I did take my Select Seal Matte Sealer and seal all of these. And honestly, I don't know why. I think I was thinking that my next step was going to require these being sealed, but this was completely unnecessary for what I ended up doing. So my next step was to take the Dixie Bell Putty and do a dry brush on each of these, kind of getting it mostly into those little recessed areas of the sections of the gourds and pumpkins, but also over the other parts as well. I wanted to keep this very neutral while still having just enough color in there to uh, keep it interesting. Next, I dry brushed on some of the color Castle. And then I went in with my French linen. I decided to replace the stems on most of these with just some regular natural sticks that I had. So I drilled a hole in the tops until that little stick would fit in there. And then I could just attach that with hot glue after cutting it down to size. I'm using my antiquing wax to paint the stems and then to also kind of go around um, around the where the stem meets the pumpkin. I end up uh, watering it down just a little bit to kind of blend that onto the top of the pumpkins and gourds. Here's where I'm wiping off the excess with a baby wipe. And then I will take a little bit more of that antiquing wax, spritz a little water into it, and that's here's where I'm applying this onto the top. Just so it kind of gives it kind of like a, you know, an aged, not so clean look. Once I have that on there, I wipe that back with the baby wipe as well. And then these will be ready to be put back into that cornucopia. So I go ahead and insert these into the position I want, and then I secure them with a little bit of hot glue. Now I gotta warn you, I am not good at floral arrangements at all. Like that is probably one of my weakest points as far as crafting. So, you know, you may not like the arrangement that I did here. You could probably do something much prettier. Um, I'm just, I'm just not good at this. But I, I wanted to give it a shot. So what I'm using, I'm just using these large, I have large, small, and medium leaves that came kind of from the same uh, bunches. Or, I don't know what it's called. Um, anyway, they're all kind of in the same color family. They all go together. Um, they're just, you know, they just have a little bit of difference. So I'm just going to hot glue a bunch of leaves 
in and around these pumpkins. And then um, in that same batch of florals that I bought, um, they had these little, they're like the little balls that they have all clumped together. And they were the same color scheme. So I add those in. Um, but anyway, I just thought I should throw out that disclaimer that I am not good at this part of crafting. So hope, hopefully I'm just, you know, spurring some ideas for you. This is how it turned out. Let me know in the comments if you've made over one of these before and how you did it or what you did. I would love to hear some new ideas. For my next project, this one is super simple. I am using these wooden dice from Dollar Tree. I'll be using three of them. They come three in a pack. And then I also have these decoupage papers that I got from Amazon. I can leave the link below in case you're interested. They have several different images in all different sizes. I am going to be using the smallest of the different sizes today. And one of the things um, for me, unfortunately, a lot of the images have devils in them which I don't care for that's not my vibe but there are some with owls and witches and pumpkins so I picked out the ones that I like the best and the first thing I'm going to do is give all of these a coat with my Dixie Bells buttercream mineral chalk paint. I want to stamp the word boo on one of the sides of the wooden dice so I'm using IOD's letterpress stamp for this, and I laid my two letters out. I have to use the O twice, so I laid it out onto the blocks and then used my little piece of thin mount to pick up those stamps and then ink them up and press them down. And now I'm going to go ahead and add that last O. I'm using Stays on Ink in the color Jet Black for this. So now I'm just going to pick that group up together and turn them over to the opposite side so that I can use a different font in that same stamp set to do 10 slash 31. There was no slash stamp, so I used the lowercase l and just put it at an angle. I start with the 10. I pick that up with my thin mount and get that inked up with my stays on ink. Carefully pressing it down, holding it steady with one hand while I rub with the other. There's the 10. I'm gonna wipe that off really quick and then do the same with the slash and with the 31. So now for the remaining sides, I needed an image 
for each of the remaining sides. So I needed 12 of these and I tried to pick out the ones, eliminating the ones that had devils and the ones that just wouldn't um, look right because there was too much writing or whatever. So I picked out all the ones that I thought would work and got to cutting them out. I started out with my little uh, paper cutter that I have here just to be able to quickly go through and get rid of those white edges. And then I, from there, I just hand trimmed them with my scissors. Now I had thought that these were white enough that they would completely overlap that little center area or circular area on each side of those dice. Um, but it didn't. So I needed to give them, they were long enough, but not white enough. So I needed to give them a more organic torn edge so that I could just kind of blend that in and then add some antiquing wax to it to um, just make it look more like it belonged there. So I tore them out. I added some water to them with a paintbrush and gave them a nice torn edge. And then I just put them on with my Mod Podge. But then I also realized that I could just sand off the ones that hung over the edge lengthwise. So I didn't need to trim those with the paintbrush in, dipped in water and tearing it. I could just go ahead and glue those on, only tearing the sides, leaving the tops and bottoms um, to be sanded off after they were dry. Once they were dry, I was ready to sand off the excess. And I had to use 80 grit sandpaper for this because it's not like regular decoupage paper or like napkins. It's a little bit thicker. It's not as thick as like copier paper, but it is it's is a little bit thicker um, than normal decoupage paper. So it took a little bit more grit to get through that and sand off those edges so they sit flush onto the dice. Once that was all done, everybody got a final coat of the Mod Podge mat. So now I just want to add a little age. I'm using my antiquing wax. I started out being very careful to just go around the edges, leaving the areas where I had the numbers and the letters. Um, not antiqued, but I didn't like the way that looked. Everything else was antiqued and those weren't. So I ended up just going in and painting over all of it with the antiquing wax and then wiping it back with the cloth. So that's all there was to this one, and here's how they turned out. For my final project, I'm using this glass bottle I got from Goodwill and this cute little owl mold that I got from Amazon. This is actually a pretty thick mold. I would recommend using resin for this. I was really low on resin, so I decided to go with my air dry clay. I use IOD's air dry clay, and it worked out okay, but it, it is pretty thick. So I dusted it with cornstarch, and then got a pretty good size amount of clay to start molding into this mold. And one of the nice things, because it's bigger and it is pretty thick, they do have those little uh, kind of like footing things on the bottom of this to help keep it from 
stretching out and not being easy to work with, so it wasn't too bad. I'm just going to go ahead and smooth this down in there the best I can, try to get the, the back of it as flat as I can. And now it's time to demold, and it's actually really nice and detailed. I went ahead and applied this to the bottle right away using wood glue. I use Gorilla Wood Glue. And, you know, normally I would prep the surface of the bottle with a spray paint or something, and I didn't do that in this case. Uh, I wasn't sure if it was going to work out well or not, but it absolutely did. So, I don't know, just something to keep in mind. You don't always have to prep that surface with a paint. I did clean it really well with rubbing alcohol first. And so now I'm just gently pressing down, trying to get it um, on there as best I can without distorting the casting. And once that was pretty much dry, I covered it with a coat of my satin granite from Rust-Oleum. Let that dry, and now I'm going to go in with Hurricane Gray Dixie Bell Mineral Chalk Paint. And they were really close in color. But here's where I just wanted to start with the painting process on this. The other one, um, the spray paint was just a base coat for my other paint to stick to. And normally I put my castings on and paint them right away. But in this case it was late and I had to let it sit overnight. So I did get some lifting around the edges. Just wanted to make note of that. So here I'm putting some baking soda into that Hurricane Gray. I think I've done two coats without it on the bottle and so now I'm going to use this as a texture paint to go in around the edges of that casting you'll be able to see where it kind of lifted up around the edges this will help minimize that it doesn't completely fill it in but it helps minimize it and I did have to use like a smaller brush for the front of the casting and you know to get into all those details and then I pick this larger brush to finish the stippling of that texture paint onto the front sides and back of the bottle. <clears throat> Look at all that beautiful texture. It is just fabulous. So now I'm going to go in with my Spanish Copper Rub and Buff to highlight all the details on this owl. In hindsight, I should have waited and done this last. Oh my gosh, you guys, I apologize for my voice. I'm having serious allergy issues right now. I am so sorry. I'll try to get through this. We're almost done. Um, I, I would have done this last because of the next steps that I do. I would have liked that to have been the last step after sealing and everything, but I just didn't think it through. Um, so what I decided to do is do some Dixie dirt around those edges where the owl meets the bottle, just to give it some grunge, some age. So I'm um, using Mod Podge. You have to use something that the Dixie dirt will stick to. So I went ahead and did this around the whole thing, but it's too close to the color of the bottle. It just didn't show up. And if I'd had a darker color of Dixie Dirt, I would have done that. This is the only one I had, and I thought it would still add something to it, so I went ahead and gave it a go, but here I'm brushing off the excess Dixie Dirt, and it just didn't, um, didn't show up at all. So I squirted it with some water, hoping that that would maybe darken it up a little bit, but no, there's just nothing. And, yeah, um, anyway, so I'm going to go in with Van Dyke Brown Glaze and age up those edges a little bit with that instead. Um, the problem that worked, but the problem is I still had that line that was kind of shiny from the Mod Podge. So I ended up having to use a gloss clear coat over this to cover that up. Because it was, uh, you can't really see it on camera, I don't think, but um, in person it was really obvious. So, anyway, now I'm going to make a hang tag for this. I took a just a regular cardstock tag, ready made, and cut it down to size so that it would be a better fit for my bottle. 
Then I use Mod Podge to glue down some scrapbook paper on the front and the back. Let that dry. Now I have this little owl charm I want to use on this. So I'm going to go ahead and use that same Spanish copper rub and buff and give him a coat of that. I have some scrap pieces of uh, rice paper that I wanted to use to add on top of this to add some interest to it. So I picked out the section that has some script on it and just tore that out and then I will go ahead and Mod Podge that on top of the cardstock. And with this one I purposely turned it over so it was backwards, the writing was backwards but it was more faint and I really liked that. And you couldn't really tell. like. You know, it was just really faint, um, but I end up having to redo this, so I don't turn it over on the next one that I do. So now I'm just sealing up those edges with the Mod Podge. Oh, and I skipped the part where I sanded down the um, scrapbook paper. I just used, oh, here we go. I just have it backwards. <laughs> this is hard, y'all, getting all these videos on here where they belong. Um... I'm just using my sanding block. You can use a little nail file too to get into those little areas that the sanding block doesn't. And then also with this one, I tried to use my scissors to poke back through that hole. And the next one that I remade, I actually you know, got smart and used my hole punch and it worked out a lot better. So off camera, I went around the edges with the Jolie Black Finishing Wax. And now I want to go around them with the Spanish Copper Rub and Buff. So I start out, everything's okay. I'm just going around the edges with my finger. And I decide to kind of go up over the edges onto the top. And I got a big smudge. And then I was like, oh, well, I better make the whole thing kind of big and smudgy. And it just ended up being way too much, not what I wanted at all. So that's when I decided to just go ahead and start over and make another one. So I did the same thing. Um, same scrapbook paper, uh, another piece of that rice paper. And now I'm just using the rub and buff. I did not use the black wax. I'm just using the rub and buff to go around those edges. And that's it. I have this waxed cording from the paper studio I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to be using this to attach the owl to the hang tag and the hang tag to the bottle. I tie a knot at the top trying to line it up to where I want that owl to hang down onto the hang tag. This wasn't a really easy task because this stuff is kind of slippery and I, uh, I needed to get him down in position and still tighten that knot at the same time. So when I got it pretty close, I went ahead and just put a little dab of hot glue on the back of that knot to attach him to the front so he would stay in place so I could finish up with tightening up that knot and then attaching this to the bottle. So I figured out approximately where I wanted it to hang on the bottle and then tied another knot there. And then from there, I can wrap those um, two strands around the neck of the bottle and then hot glue them into place. And since I forgot to hit record on my camera, I'm going to show you best I can as to what I did here after the fact. This is the first knot that I tied to the hang tag and then that's the second knot. And then I wrapped those two remaining strands around the bottle, the neck of the bottle, and then hot glued them in place. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, I lost the footage, but the cap of the bottle, I just did that Spanish copper rub and buff all over that. And then the whole bottle um, did get a clear gloss coat. And here's how this one turned out. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. I really hope you find my content useful and will consider subscribing to my channel. But more importantly, I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.